let's first address your eating disorder because you mentioned being in treatment and having someone there supporting you 24 seven. What has been going on with regards to your eating disorder in the real world? I left um, in a body that I wasn't comfortable with, that it was foreign to me. You know, I'd never, I'd been sick and malnourished for so long that it didn't, I didn't know what it's like to be in an adult woman's body. I don't know how to embrace that. And so I left there feeling very insecure and ashamed and spent a lot of time isolating and not going out and seeing people because I'm afraid of the way they judge me based on what I look like. And when people say you look great, you know, I sit there going, but I feel terrible. And ha you know, the two don't match up. And I still feel like an ugly person and disgusting. Um, um, so, you know, I still wake up and, uh, you know, all my thoughts are still consumed with just lose a little bit of weight. You're too fat, you're too disgusting, it'll make things better. Yet everything that I've learned and practiced says that doesn't matter anymore. That's not who you are. But I still hear that. So I'm still unhappy with the way I look and I have gone back to being more restrictive with my diet and some of my, my the rules around eating and things that just made me feel more comfortable and working out again and um, still struggling with the purging. Yeah. And it's hard to admit that because you know you don't look sick anymore so you shouldn't be acting sick anymore. You know, it doesn't make you a failure to admit that you're still struggling. You know that? You know that actually takes strength. <laughs> so I want to ask you, how, how has it been, you know, watching Christina come home and still obviously battling a lot of these inner demons? It honestly just, like, it completely breaks my heart to hear her talk about herself and the way that she truly believes she looks fat is just, you know, unimaginable and it was just as unimaginable a year ago when you were here as it is today and just I wish that I could make you see what I see and what everybody else sees and I feel like when you came home I just I you know you sounded like you had so much hope when you were in treatment and I knew that coming home was hard because you wanted to hide from everybody and you hated your body and you just couldn't handle it and I was just worried for you that like the only reason you wanted to come home was to lose weight and you know it's kind of just how things work in life and in our family. Things sort of start to happen quickly and I feel like in the last, especially a couple months, things have been getting even tougher for you and it, it just really breaks my heart and like I wish I could just fix it for you and give you all the help you need and be the support that you need, but you know, it's, it's a lot more than that. I think one of the most important things I'm hearing is that you're feeling pressure you came out of treatment, residential treatment, and you're feeling like a failure. But the truth is, this is, this is your journey. It doesn't make you a failure because you end formal treatment and you're still struggling. That means you're still on this journey to getting better. With the one thing I know is this is an ongoing process. There's no quick fix. You don't go into treatment, you don't go see a doctor, get a magic pill, and you're all better. And, no. um, you know, I believe, you know, as long as I keep putting one foot in front of the other and moving in the right direction, I guess, you know, I am getting there, but... Um, you haven't given up hope, have you? Not given up hope, but it's definitely wavers.